Good morning. A pleasure to have you join us on the program where we take a look at the headlines in the papers and with the help of a guest, we try to unravel what is behind it. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I'm joined by the publisher of CKN News, Chris Wandu. Thank you very much for joining thank, us. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. All right, we will start with the Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, we will uh, take it from what they are saying. Let's see. The punch has govs, NMA, NLC, others tackle reps over NCDC bill. Legislation, that's the first rider, threatens Nigeria's federalism. A recipe for disaster, that's the NGF speaking. Ogun records 104 coronavirus infections in Shagamu Company. Just above the masthead, we have um, some Nigerian operators producing oil at $93. That's according to the NNPC. Okay, before we go there, let's see what's right on your screen. Just beneath uh, the picture of that truck, um, we have a Motekun begins operation in Oyo, July, says Makainde. Ondo Cemetery workers remanded for cutting off corpses' heads. Obasaki in late night session as APC screens Edo aspirants. We also have Ekiti berates Odudu as Buhari's aide knocks Fawemi. Lagos mechanic burnt in gas explosion. NOHL detains cops. Insurgents pretended to be preachers, killed 81 people, survivor tells Zulum. Uh, that's uh, the situation in that part of the country as of today. If we flip over to the top of the paper, we have COVID-19 threatening 13 million jobs in Nigeria. That's um, uh, from the UN. Senate considers revised 2020 budgets today. We already know that the House of Reps have done their own due diligence. We now have one from them confirmed. And then we go to Taraba State, where we have this one saying, Taraba killings, confessions of killer soldiers, Malami shields from trial. All right, let's bring uh, Chris in. Which of these headlines? Let's start with a big one and the public hearing. Governors, um, NMA, NLC, others tackle reps over NCDC bill. Yes, um, that has been one hell of a controversial bill um, right from the uh, onset. Uh, it has been shrouded in a lot of controversies. Um, let's even start with uh, how the bill came about. Uh, it was said and uh, happily uh, accepted by the House of Reps Speaker that that bill, as it were, was just carved out of a law uh, for from one of China. the countries. <laughs> I didn't mention any country, <laughs> and, and, and that is not possible. It's not some, you cannot just pick up something, a law, from another country and just want to impose because our cultural uh, system and our political system and the likes are different. So that in itself brought a lot of um, controversies, but later on, um, it was um, he accepted. That it was accepted. Then secondly, also um, for a law, for a bill to become a law, it has to go through um, hearing. At the point, the rate at which the bill was moving within the House of Reps was like <laughs> there was not going to be a hearing. In fact, um, it was said that there was going to be a, a hearing, and there was a huge cry out. And um, then they also said uh, that, OK, we're going to have a hearing. Now, from when we start looking at that um, law, as a student law, I know that um, they are each of the federating units of the country has, you know, impute, has a, a certain law that they, um, they, have. they, they have. So um, it, it was said that there's going to be a serious problem between the federal and the state. Um, and that is why the Nigerian um, Governors Forum came and started kicking against that. Uh, but the last one I had was that 
Yes, okay, that's good to be hearing. Uh, but do you actually believe the legislation is, as this headline is saying, threatening Nigeria's federalism? That is, what, that's I, that is what I was saying. I said okay. each federalism, is, yes, because the states, there are some certain law that are domiciled within the federal setting, and also the states have their own you know, right over certain laws. So even the NCDC itself came out to say that this is not the right time for this, because it's more like a distraction for them that let us see if we can be able to handle this pandemic and bring it to a certain level where it is manageable, where we know that, okay, we've done enough. Instead of going, now, uh, as of uh, yesterday, it was also um, published that journalists were not allowed. Oh, our colleague had a run-in with them. Good, in fine. So what I'm saying is, is now, if you now don't allow journalists to witness the proceedings and yeah, then tomorrow, that also will leave room for a lot of rumors, fake news, because what we're going to get now is a third-hand information, which could be distorted. It depends on whatever a member of the committee tells the press or whatever. At the end of it, or before you know it, the information is so. This is, there is something very, very controversial about this bill. That, but be that as it may be, don't forget that, despite the fact, even if the House of Reps passes the law, the Senate also has to pass it. Then there's going to be a concurrent. By the by, you both don't see houses, that happening. Uh, it, it will be very difficult for now. But let's see how it <laughs> okay, goes. Okay, let's see how it goes. <laughs> yes. Indeed, um, there is this story. I, I, a lot of persons might not um, catch on to it quickly, but there's been. I've seen it in the news okay. a little more frequently these days. People chopping off the head of dead bodies uh, for whatever reason. Uh, this one says all the cemetery workers remanded for cutting off corpses. And what, what could you what, what could you attribute to these? trend, even in the midst of a pandemic? It's a very terrible one. And um, over the years, you have to just one time for this, ask, how come those that do this so-called ritual, uh, rituals of use, um, people for money don't get rich themselves? It's, it's, it's something for us to, you've always, seen, whenever you see there, you see how rich they are looking and the rest of them. So why would anybody get involved in that? It's very, very disheartening. And for this to be also somebody that works in a cemetery and uh, we had to go and um, his body and not cutting off head and the rest of them. The kind of type of things that we, we see in this country can be very, very... Uh, but I think it should be held. And if it is investigated and it find culpable, it should be, there should be... There are some laws we have in place already that handle such things. Uh, it deserves to be in prison for a time, for some time. Uh, the Obasaki situation, uh, there is a story <laughs> here. Obasaki in late night session as APC screens Edo uh, Asperger. He's come up after we even had it in the news earlier where he said that um, uh, the national chairman's interference is making the process somehow skewed. What, what's your reaction to you all know, of that? You know, the APC um, Edo uh, problem has become um, what uh, former governor of your State, um, late Bola, like calls five fingers of a leper. Um, in that um, is, is ruling out of, uh, I don't know what to say, because come to think of it, all sorts of propaganda is being put in place. As of yesterday, we now, you know, the initial issue was that the man had a, um, Obaseke had a fake university uh, certificate. Agree. University of Lagos, I'm um, sorry, UI. Ibadan. UI came out yesterday to say, no, he graduated from our school. So that's one has to be put in place. Then uh, within the day, uh, within uh, Monday or the other, the national chairman of APC also came out with a letter informing security agencies and INEC that there is a new secretariat for APC in um, in Edo State, the Benin. And the other fashion came out and said, no, there's nothing like that. Then um, the controversy between the governor and the, and the national chairman, or which, uh, what will be used, uh, the primary is going to be used during the primary, whether direct or indirect, and the rest of them. But I think that um, uh, our politicians don't learn. They don't learn from history. You know why? If we look at what happened in Zamfara State, where APC practically lost that state, a state that it had under its hood. What happened in River State, where River State a governorship candidate was disqualified? What happened in Bayesa recently, where, AP, where APC won the, won the election? But a PDP, we cannot have a PDP governor. It only means that our, uh, our politicians are learning. But well, wouldn't you now say that um, Oshemole is, because that is what he said, that he's following, um, engaging in due diligence. So the situation uh, that was witnessed in Bielsa and uh, which one of the states uh, yeah, uh, is not repeated here, where somebody is elected and then certificate issue makes them they, they, ineligible. Just as I said, our, our, our politicians are short memory. Come to think of it, this um, um, national chairman of APC was the one that said, when he was governor, 
that I have killed and buried Godfatherism in those states. What are we having? What is the, what are, what, what's in play now? Godfatherism, because the um, national chairman wants to assert himself as the, as the leader of the party in the state. But once a governor is elected under a party, automatically the leadership of the party in that state becomes his. Now, uh, the, uh, Adams of Shremele is the national is the national chairman of APC, and not just the chairman of APC in Edo State. So, but I hope and believe and pray that we will not have a repeat of what happened in Zafara, as I said before, where at the end of it all, out of their own careless mistakes, they lost, uh, they lost that state. Uh, the leaders that be, whoever they are within the APC, should be able to step in now to make sure that they don't play into the hands of the opposition. Okay, let's take a look at what's uh, on the Nation newspaper now. Um, the big one, again, Edo Ondo violence will stop results declaration. Anek is warning, uh, still on the Edo uh, situation. Uh, all attention seems to be um, on Edo, and let's yeah, talk about Ondo, what's happening Ondo in Ondo State. Yes, State. Ondo State is true. Um, I actually tried to reach out to some people there. We definitely will try and get them on the news to know what is happening as per our preparations. Um, we also have another one. Lockdown raised ca rape cases, says federal government. Man rapes 41 women in Kanu, two to die for rape, robbery, 45-year-old defiles toddler. Tribunal dismisses Malaya's case, laughing no grudge against Makane Day. That's uh, some headlines for you. And a sad one from Bonu Katsina. Uh, Boko Haram bandits kill 99 in Boni, Kat, um, Bonu Katsina attacks. Buhari orders troops to go after terrorists. Those are some of the headlines on the Nation newspaper. There's a couple of um, other stories inside. Um, Bochi deputy governor test negative for COVID-19. Just a little bit of an update for you. It's showing on your screen right now. Let's start with the... Uh, situation with the lockdown. Um, there's been protests about rape all across the country. Uh, it seems there is a spike in it. One, one would say the spike is not as bad as it has always been. It's, it's the same situation. Yes, um, it's been the same situation. Um, I will tell you this for free. The issue we're having, uh, why we're having um, uh, all this information coming to the fore now is because of the advent of social media. Okay, and um, now um, uh, females also, um, we've always had the issue of stigmatization, and which is why most women have, in the past, have refused to come out to say, uh, you know, publicly that uh, they've been victims right. of rape and rest of them. But women are getting more enlightened now, and more daring, quote and unquote, that um, people no longer care what the society or what anybody around them is going to say. So people come out boldly to say, yes, so so person have raped me and the rest of them. And um, so that is why we're having this. But it is very annoying because even if we look at the rates, um, just a few days ago, a doctor in Benio State raped an 11-year-old house girl. Um, the one in Kano, the guy has raped 40 women within, within the past one year. There have been instances where fathers have been raping their daughters. Oh, yes. Daughters. Yeah, the, uh, you, you, the commissioner you, raised it, and it was so disgusting. You can, you can, you can, so you can imagine. I, the prob I think the problem we're having is that of moral decadence within the society. Uh, societal values. We are losing it. Um, people, we, we are not paying attention uh, to what's supposed to be. And this is where our religious leaders, our uh, teachers in the schools, and parents and the rest of them. While we're also talking about the, uh, uh, talking to the female children, we should also talk to the male child. I think we should also right time to start also incorporating it in the, in, in the psyche of the male child, right from when they're growing up that so, 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 so things should not, should be, not be happening and should right. not be seen. Let, let's see that. the situation in Bonu Katsina. There seemed to be a spike again in the killings. Innocent people are just dying uh, at the hands of bandits and terrorists. Um, the president is sending troops. Uh, this reaction, some say reactionary response, um, it seems entrenched uh, uh, in our system. Can't we have like you know, a situation where the attacks don't happen at all uh, by troops being there as against being sent there when these things happen. I look at it from two fronts. First of all, let's look at it from the point of what happened a few days ago. The chief of army staff, General Brighter, visited the president 
where he glorily told the president that he has been in, in Bono State and the number of um, Boko Haram that have been killed and the rest of them and giving a glossy picture about the situation in Bono and most of the uh, Northeast. And within 24 hours, Boko Haram um, uh, <laughs> replied um, by going to Bono, uh, local government in Bono, and killed about 81 people. And um, then bringing me to the second one, the problem of police had is not just having the hardware. We are lack, our military authorities lack the intelligence. Intelligence gathering is first and foremost what is more important in a situation like that. And that is what happens across the globe. Now, if you see how the one, the one that happened in Bonn, what, how, what happened? The guys, the soldiers came like preachers. Yes. Yes, they came like preachers. Okay, and came to, to the place and you know our, our society when you see preachers people call people to come let us you know trying to preach and so then they came in and they slaughtered and killed so many of them the problem we're also having now is not only that of boko haram we also have an issue of banditry there was a protest in Kasina a few days ago over the killers in Kasina state it has spread to benue as well so it is a total issue security issue that we have to look at immediately. And I have always been part of the advocates that it is high time we change our service chiefs. We, they have done enough. Those that have been there now. That it has been a discussion for a long time. It's been a raised on. And then before you know it, it's just yes. like, it's like every it other thing. It exactly. Just went, uh, exactly. Them. All right, let's take a look at the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Um, the big one here, still on the Bonu uh, Katsina situation, said 99 killed in Bonu Katsina. Kidnappers killed two, abduct others in Kogi. Police arrest man who raped 40 women in one year. Um, Chris just spoke about that now. So let's see what um, the other stories. Nigeria, India, DR Congo, home to over 33% of the world's poorest. Uh, that is not news to us anymore. But, you know, even now that we have a pandemic, they are foretelling that it's going to get even worse. Between. What, in your opinion, let's look at you, some solution now, would be uh, proactive actions that they can begin to put in place as against the rhetorics to really reflect that they are working to move people from poverty, especially induced by this pandemic? One, in as much as we continue to be uh, a mono economy, um, country, we always run into this problem. If you understand what I'm trying to say. Well, the, the government have been saying they're trying to diversify, move on to agriculture, manufacturing, and some other aspects. And I mean, we do see what's going on in the agriculture sector. So. Well, it is good, but it's not good enough. It's not good enough. Um, you have seen what has happened. How many times have we been able to adjust our budget within the last six months? because of the fluctuation in prices of fuel, I'm um, sorry, petrol, um, oil, if you understand. And that will continue because everything is predicated on prices on oil. So if it goes up, we want to adjust, we, go, we just adjusted just a few days ago, and we may continue adjusting. Now, we have to continually diversify the economy as it were, so that at any given point in time, we have certain shocks. It will not affect us uh, uh, directly. Then also, except we'll be able to tackle the issue of power. That is a major issue as it were. Because you know why? We are not growing the SMEs. The SMEs are supposed to be the pivot of every economic growth. So if the SMEs are not growing, if people, individuals are not be able to um, um, come up and be able to sustain um, their businesses, then we always be having an issue because that in itself, our unemployment will continue to rise okay. at, any, at, at any given point in time. So for me, Diversification of the economy is very, very key, and the step we do that will continue having issues. I wish our leaders will actually listen. I they hope will. they will. Right, let's see <laughs> what else is here on the um, Nigerian Tribune. Uh, we have uh, reps passed, re uh, passed revised 2020 budget um, of 10.8 trillion naira. Um, he just mentioned it. Uh, police squadron, I heard no grudges against Makainde. That's uh, they are laughing, speaking. There are two of them. Um, on the picture there. Uh, uh, there's another one. Over 100 million Nigerians have no identity. That's NINC. Um, 4.3 billion Naira. EFCC didn't arrest, interrogate our officials. Ondo government begins recruitment for Amoteku Corps. Edo APC factions 
Dual over state secretary Dwight Einek, a Basaki graduated from UI school, says. Okay, uh, let's just, um, we have um, less than uh, five minutes on the program, so just stick your pick. Yes, um, for me, um, the issue of the ID cards is vital. Um, a lot of people have not been able to secure their national ID cards, not because they didn't register, a lot of people got registered, but until now, they've not been able to get it. And, um, and I continue to ask, why do we have to continue having all sorts of all manner of ID cards, identifications, and the rest of them? Why can't we just have a convergence where everything, you want a passport, you want um, a road safety um, driver license. Um, it's all connected. So much, where we can have a convergence, where all this identification can be connected into one ID card, which could be the yeah, there, NIMC. Wouldn't there be complications with that if you consider our situation? We can't even manage the ones that we have. No, so no, if no, you no, no, put no. everything and somebody loses one card, where you have all this information, you go for, you go for another. You go for another. You know why? For security purposes. Presently, we don't know how many we are in Nigeria. Anybody can just walk into Nigeria and just pick up a Nigerian passport. I don't know if you are aware of that, especially our fellow West African neighbors. They come in here and have our passport and cause, uh, and cause a lot of havoc and the rest of them. Uh, part of, and that in itself is also helps in economic planning. It is only when you know the public. I can tell specifically, can anybody tell us the number, how many we are? It's only they say Nigeria is about. 200 million people. Oh, the last answer was 185 and the rest uh, We of spoke them. to Dr. Tui earlier. He also um, um, he talked about the need for us to have a census. We need so to. We know. But you know, also, the, you know, the problem we have with census, political undertone. At the end of it all, we say, oh, some part, some uh, part of the country, we say, no, you know, you, we are undercounted. We, say, we, we will get there. We will get let's, there. Let's have a little bit of optimism. <laughs> thank you so much for thank coming on the program this morning. It's much. appreciated. Thank you very much. And of course, thank you for your time. I hope you were able to, you know, grab a thing or two from the conversation, uh, looking at the headlines this morning. But you still need to go take a look at the headlines behind the headlines, what the stories really are. I'll see you soon. My name is Felicity Ezewike.